few days ago, I was messing around in Polybridge, and I had kind of a funny idea. Can I actually beat Polybridge levels using pieces that are at most 0.5 meters long? Now, for reference, a normal road is about 2 meters long, and 0.5 looks like this. Now, that's obviously a lot smaller, and it's actually impossible using the grid to make pieces that are even closer together. Now, in addition to requiring a lot of support, all these small pieces are going to be significantly heavier than normal ones, and they also have another major issue, which I'll demonstrate in this first level. Now, starting out, the first thing I wanted to do is use the arc tool and start to create a roadway. Just doing this, though, already gave me problems, because the minimum length you can do is one meter. So once I saw that, I decided to put it down, but you can see I have to go in now and put in a road in between all of the other roads. This is quite a bit of work, but eventually here I did manage to arc it all the way across, and now I wanted to start by supporting it. This is where the absurdity of the challenge starts to set in, though, because you'll notice all of my supports are absolutely tiny. And in order to get this braced correctly, I also had to lower the foundation on the right side here, but you'll notice a new problem. The roadway seems to sag a lot. For whatever reason, in the third game, nodes are super bendy now, and they really do don't like to stay in place. Now to fix that, I was hoping I could add on more wood to the bottom, and maybe that'd make it a bit stronger, but just by adding on these extra pieces of wood, I'm gonna be adding on a lot of weight to this bridge, and I was worried it would make it even more bendy. Now fortunately, it was able to mostly stay together, but it bent just a little bit too far and clipped into the boat. Now to fix that, what I wanted to do was actually rebuild my bridge a little bit, but you'll notice this time what I'm doing is building it horizontally. This means I could use the grid tool, which makes it a lot easier to copy supports like this. Now, once I got something pretty basic built up, I copied it on the one side, and you can see I also flipped it over to the other side as well. And once I got these connected together, you can see I used a few pieces of wood in between them to link them together better, and once I had this copied over the way I wanted here, I wanted to try it out now. This was definitely a lot of wood, but it actually did seem to be holding together, and you can see now I'm able to crest over the other side, and while while it does break a little bit, it stays together just well enough that I was able to get over. This, though, is one third of the distance I need to cover, and for the other two sections, I needed to copy over this bridge and then figure out something to do in the middle. One of the big things helping me before was the fact that I had a sort of arch-like design, but now I can't do that since I'm not allowed to build up around this plane. So I started building a flat road here, and I was hoping I could at least get something to hold together. The other issue, though, is I can't build on the foundation since it's just too close to it, so I have to get kind of creative with the way I'm bracing this together. Now, at first tier, I just used a few wood pieces to try to hold it up, but these pretty much immediately snapped on me, and that just really wasn't gonna work. Now, I did have steel available to me in this level, but for some reason, I wanted to challenge myself more and try to use only wood, which meant that this was going to be a lot harder. It's also very possible that I just didn't know Notice that steel was available at the time, but uh, we won't worry about that. And moving on here, you can see now I'm trying to brace a lot better against the two side bridges. Now for this, I'm trying to use as much wood as possible to sort of break the fall of the truck, and eventually here I nearly got something together. It was struggling a lot here, but fortunately it did actually seem to hold right up until it touched the last bridge. Now unfortunately it's very difficult to figure out what I'm even even supposed to reinforce, because a lot of the time, there's nothing I can even do to really improve things. The best thing I could think of at the time was just to redo some of my supports and make them a little more streamlined. This seemed to be just enough to distribute the weight the way I needed, and now you can see I got the truck through the middle and onto that last bridge without it breaking. And even with just using wood, this was still a pretty good warm-up level, and there was definitely some harder stuff to come. Next here, we have a level that has a lot more going on, and you can see what I need to do is get the truck across and have the little car jump on top of it and get over to its flag. Now, starting out, the easiest thing I could think to do was just to use a lot of steel on the bottom and try to keep this all together. Once I had a very large trapezoid on the bottom here, I copied it over to the other side as well, and I was hoping this would be good enough to hold. And trying this out now, it 
did seem to actually be able to stay together. It was a little weak in the middle, and I could see some pieces broke, but the bridge was mostly together, and the car was able to get across here. Now, you'll notice another problem, though, is the car didn't really get on the truck at all, and to solve that, I wanted to fix the middle of the bridge to make it a little bit smoother. Now, with that successfully band-aided, I also added a little extra piece on the end here, and you can see with this, it lets the car flip up quite well without it immediately shattering the bridge. This, of course, lets the car get to the end, but I still have all of these pieces on top of the truck that aren't 0.5 meters long. So I wanted to start on that now, and you can see what I'm doing is just trying to replace pretty much all of these large pieces with little segments of small ones. My hope was that these would all be drop-in replacements, and I wouldn't need to do any advanced work here, and you can see me continuing this on the right bridge. Now trying this out, it did seem to have a major problem. The road on the end is just so heavy now that it pretty much drags the rest of the custom shape off, and by doing that, it completely gets rid of the chance of the car flipping on top of the truck. So I realized pretty quickly here, I was gonna need to go for a redesign, and for this, you can see I got rid of my road on the left side, and I'm just trying to build the one up on the right. Now the advantage to using so many small road segments is that I can curve my platform quite nicely here, and get a much more more gradual transition for the car. I did need a little bit more height on this, and for that, I just pretty much kept adding on more roads. The main problem I was having was that transition from the ground onto the truck wasn't very smooth, so I was losing a lot of energy that way. Fortunately though, I was able to mostly make up for it, and you can see here it hit the flag, and that beats that level. Now I figure I should stop playing around, and you can see what I'm trying for now is a hydraulic level. This was going to be considerably harder, and I did decide decided to make one exception to my 0.5 meter rule. In this level, we have these four road pieces that are already set in place, and I decided to keep them, but make sure that all of my supports were still going to be less than 0.5 meters. This level seemed just about too perfect to pass up, and seemed like a really good way to at least somewhat get around that restriction. To begin keeping this together though, I still needed an insane amount of roads just to get this near rigid. Now once I had those rigid, the next Next thing I wanted to do was make some support arms here, and this is going to be for the swinging mechanism. The plan was to swing the top road down into place, and I was going to need hydraulics to move the bottom one. The top one was a little bit easier though, so I wanted to start off with that, and you can see once I had those arms made here, I decided to attach them up to the bridge. One very strange problem with this challenge is I can't overlap any arms at all because there's just no space to do it. This means all of my designs have to work in kind of a weird two-dimensional way, and it's just a very strange way to think about reinforcing that I don't normally even worry about. Now you can see here, once I had a lot of nodes supporting this, now I decided to attach them over onto the right side to link these two arms together. I knew this support really wasn't going to be great, and it really wasn't meant to hold the support arm up, it was meant to keep it from swinging side to side. To support this up, I was going to use this arm that's attaching over to the right node here, and while it still also really isn't great, it at least is going to be a little bit better positioned to do this, and with a little bit of difficulty, I was able to link these together and just keep all the nodes under 0.5 meters. And trying it out now, it wasn't half bad. You'll also notice I added on a couple of springs to dampen the load a bit, but one problem I had is the tractor didn't really want to ride on the roads, and it seemed to fall out of sync when it was falling. Now finally with better reinforcing, I managed to get this in place now, and the tractor barely managed to get on that platform, and at least was halfway across. Now though, I needed to get to the other side, and for this, I needed to use the road on the bottom, while also avoiding all of the other support points that I added into place. This was not going to be easy, but my main idea was just to mirror what I had on the top and put it on the bottom. So I pasted in those support arms here, and with these in place, I linked these together now and attached it up to the bottom islands to give them something to rest on. And now finally to move this up and over to the right, my plan was to use a long chain of small hydraulics. This should just function like a large hydraulic, although I do notice that small hydraulics tend to move a lot faster than the big ones. Now at least at first tier, it seemed to work pretty well, but I was going to need to move it a little bit further if I wanted this to work. Now to do that, I moved these hydraulics further down to the support arm and with a little bit bit of reinforcing, 
unboxing and moving around some of the support points for the attachment arms, I got something that almost stood up. It fell down just a little bit, and by doing this, the tractor wasn't going to be able to get over. Fortunately though, just by barely tweaking some things, I was able to get it to rest nicely on the right island and just keep it in place long enough that it managed to get to its flag. Now that level used hydraulics, but it didn't really use them that much, and this next level is definitely going to need them a lot more. For this, I'm going to need to build some sort of ramp to get the car across, but before I actually do level 0.5 meter pieces, I needed to beat it normally first. Now, that's a little awkward. Normally what I do for the campaign levels is beat them all in advance so I can do these challenges, but I didn't get up here yet, and I really wanted to play this level, so you'll see first I'm going and trying to do a normal solution. Now, my basic strategy here is to make some sort of ramping road, and you can see to do that, I'm kind of just using a lot of large hydraulics and trying to brace this well enough so it doesn't immediately fracture. With enough difficulty here, I was able to start to get a ramp to the other side, but it was still a little too shallow. Now, to get this further, I was thinking about extending out the road a bit further on the right side, but I realized a much easier way to go is to just try to lift the entire bridge. Since the entire thing's rigid, it pretty much just makes a large ramp here, and with pretty limited work, I was able to get this all the way over, and that beats the level normally. To do this with small pieces, though, I needed to start out by making a very large chain of wood like this, but once I got that in place here, it was bending quite badly, and the bus wasn't even able to get over before it ended up breaking. Now, fortunately, I was able to use steel, so I decided just to go with that here now, and once I had the very basic structure on top in place, you'll also notice I'm building up a support arm on the right side. This should keep everything together, and I also built it up on the left side here to try to brace against the wall. It was still bending a lot more than I wanted, but this is at least sort of working, but now I need to add in the hydraulics, and this is going to be a lot more complicated than before. This time, I need them to all expand instead of contract, which means I can't just make a simple rope, and they have to make some sort of actually stable structure. My first attempt at haphazardly doing this didn't really even make a ramp at all, so I deleted this off, and you can see I tried again here, but this time I'm doing something interesting with diamonds. Now, this shape is quite a bit better at keeping itself together, and you'll notice now, as it expands, it works pretty well. Now, I was thinking reducing the weight of the road should solve that problem, and you'll also notice here I'm building up a much larger support arm in the middle of the bridge. Now, by doing this and also bracing it over to the left side very carefully here, this makes things quite a bit better. I'm actually able to have something that looks pretty decent, and even though the right side bends kind of a lot, I'm able to push it up with the hydraulic here, and nothing seems to break immediately. It even made this nice ramping structure, but since the road is so bendy, it took a ton of energy out of the car, and that just caused it to move right into the air. Now, one weird thing I tried doing was intentionally weakening the bridge in the middle, and this is to create a better pivot point so it doesn't just randomly start bending road pieces. This helped out a lot, but you'll notice I'm still pretty short of the flag. I knew I just needed a little bit more speed to get over, though, and to solve that, I was thinking about just lifting up the truck on its own. This actually seemed like a pretty decent an idea since the entire thing is rigid, it should create a nice platform for the monster truck to be able to ride across. That was pretty much exactly what I was looking for, so once I saw that, I once again went back and tried to replace everything with short materials. Of course, the hydraulics are very awkwardly shaped though, so this wasn't exactly plug and play. A lot of this required very careful planning, but finally here you can see I managed to transfer the design over. Now it works pretty much like you saw before. The only main difference being I'm intentionally breaking the hydraulics and left so they can rest on the truck and it just barely lets the monster truck get over to the other side. Now I realize part of my shtick this entire video has kind of been upping the stakes each time and this next level is definitely hard but it's kind of just different than the rest. Now for this one I pretty much just had to get a forklift over to the other side and to do that I wanted to try something out I saw on a few other channels. Now basically like you saw before nodes are very bendy in this game, and the plan was to make a rope with a lot of individual segments, and by doing that, it should allow me to dangle roads under them and create a very nice bendy bridge. Normally, you want to do this for, like, budget-saving reasons, but in this case, it just kind of happens to work perfectly for this challenge, so I figured I'd give it a shot as well. One issue, though, is this is kind of really heavy, and normally, you want to do this with cables, 
since they're a lot stronger. The forklift is also very poorly shaped, and the forks kind of go right into the roads and instantly tear them apart. So unfortunately, that kind of just didn't really work out, and I was gonna have to go for a normal bridge design instead. That's not to say that this level isn't very hard, though, because this gap is larger than anything I've tried so far in this video. I do have the benefit of some knowledge, though, and you can see what I'm making now is to support over to the left side, and this is sort of similar to my last bridge. These sort of larger supports made out of the smaller pieces actually tend to be quite strong. Now, there's also some pre-placed rope and steel in this level, and I'm trying not to attach to them at all to keep this as fair as possible. But you can see here, I copy this over to the other side now, and once I had that, to support up the middle, I also wanted to add on a simple arch structure. This I built in pretty much the same way as the other pieces, and I'm just making large connections of wood to sort of keep the whole thing from falling apart. I was okay with a little bit of bending, but I knew there was going to be quite a bit here, but with just a few chains of wood, I was able to keep this thing up in the air, and although it's still very bendy, this ended up being a level. But guys, if you have any other weird challenges for me to try out, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. And also make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, till next time.